Dutch has become the most popular language in 2019. It was a bit of a shocker for me because I never knew Dart, Dart would become that much popular. Released back in 2011 by Google, Dart was actually not so good of a language. It got buried by the JavaScript era of programming for the web. But again, Dart became super popular in 2019. That actually begged the question if Dart is going to be the future and if Dart can compare to the most popular language in the world, which is the Python. I know some people come and tell me that JavaScript is going to be the most popular or some, somebody will tell Java is going to be the most popular. But come on, who are you kidding? Python is the most popular language in the world. So you're going to be comparing Dart versus Python and see if Dart can stand a chance with Python. Even before the beginning of this video, just make one simple point clear. Dart was actually the most popular language according to the GitHub. So we're going to be looking at a lot of different indexes and you're going to be looking at a lot of different met metrics to see if Dart is even going to stand a chance with Python. If it does, what is going to be the future of Dart? So all of this video is coming up right away. Let's get this video started. I was actually going through the notes that I had for this video. I was actually talking to my friends who were actually helping me come up with the notes for this video because I was comparing the most popular language in 2019 with one of the most successful language in the world, uh, probably after this era of C and C++. Java was actually the most popular language in the world and then came Python. JavaScript also, okay, I'm not going to be, okay, that part aside. Python is the most successful language in the world currently and I was actually looking at a lot of different notes. But one thing begged the question for me, why did Dart even come into this picture? How did it even come into the picture? Well, that, the answer was because back in 2011, the Google team came out, came out with a language called Dart, which was going to be the a flagship killer for their own company. It would kill the JavaScript and take its place. But sadly, you, you see JavaScript uh, Java developers are really, really passionate about their language and they do not give them any chance to do that. And actually, Dart was buried under the JavaScript. Dart came out with its own VM. It even came out with its own transcompiler called as Dart to JS. Nothing stood a chance. So if when a language is like that, when the language is going to be buried down by the success of a popular language like JavaScript, what happens to the language? Google had different ideas for that language way back in 2017. They introduced a concept called as the Flutter Toolkit, which is going to be a cross-platform development app. And we've been talking about this app in this, video, in this channel for a very long time. And so that, that, that came into existence and that started picking interest for everybody. Well, a lot of people complained saying that Dart was a failure back then. Why is it even coming in the picture right now? And even after going through all the hardships, the Flutter team did come out with a Dart to JS transcompiler, which is a 2.0 version of that, and that did deliver on the Flutter. So, well, will, was Flutter the reason for Dart's improvement in 2019? Technically, yes, but Dart itself is a very good language, con considering that it has two different technologies that it is using. One is ahead of time technology, which is means that you don't have to worry about what the compiler is going to be, what the compiler is going to do after you write the code. Rather, as you write the code, the compiler is going to work in the background and do the compilation work for compiling it from Dart to JS. When you have ahead of time and just in time compilation, your reload becomes faster, your compilation becomes faster, the language itself looks really, really faster. Also, Dart is actually priding itself on a very good garbage collection, which I don't know about yet because I've not worked on that aspect yet. But I, I really believe that Google does work a lot about the memory management and performance optimization. So that actually is a very good point that stands a chance in the future. But comparing it to Python, we have to go through a lot of different aspects. With respect to the Dart as a programming language in 2020, right now, I am seeing the growth of Dart as a programming language only because Flutter is going up. But can Dart stand alone as a programming language and take back the Dartium days where Dart was supposed to be the only language you learned to build your web architecture? You forget the JavaScript right now. You forget even anything that it has to do with web. And Google wanted to play Monopoly back then. But uh, it could not because JavaScript is super powerful. You have a lot of different aspects with JavaScript that is actually commendable. And that's why Dart did fail back then. But in 2020, we are going to be looking at that future and seeing can Python be pulled down by the power of Dart? Well, a lot of you people will be laughing behind this video, but I do have some strong points to think that Dart can become a super powerful language in 2020. And we'll get this video started with that. 
All right, to begin with, Dart has its own VM. So Dart has its own VM where it does its own compilation, just like how Python does. So that is not a big difference. But what different does the Dart VM do? Dart VM works on the concept of call as, like I told you, ahead of time compilation and just in time compilation, which are technically newer aspects of the Dart. But way back then, the just in time compilation or the ahead of time compilation was a futuristic technology, but it still did not stand a chance because of the concept that Dart was very, very closely related to the C++ uh, syntax of programming. A well, lot, of, lot of different people had moved from C++ syntax of programming into say a JavaScript, JavaScript type of programming and even Java and Python were really, really popular in 2011. So that did not stand a chance by then. You take computer science in general, touch any, uh, any field you want, Python is going to be doing its work there. So with respect to that huge, huge side of Python, comparing it to a, say a Dart, which is actually currently uh, Coming up, for example, say, I, I did tell you guys this percentage called as 532%, which is super huge in 2019 in particular. But if you can hold the same growth in 2020, that could actually become a popular language in 2020 for sure. Other than the Dart VM, the Doja has its own trans compiler called as Dart2JS. Now, ECMA did ECMA, did actually recognize this Dart2JS and put the Dart into its own standard. So that actually gives it a good edge over the modern web development languages. Again, comparing it to TypeScript, again, comparing it to JavaScript, that does have a good chance in that region right now. Now, even though people do not really, really believe that they are going to be using a, say a VM called as Dartium, or they're going to use their own uh, browser called as Dartium, I'm pretty much sure that Dart is going to be a standing good chance in terms of becoming a good web development language. But can it become a standalone programming language just like how Python can be? Uh, no, not right now. It's got to be a very huge curve for it to come up and start pitching, pitching up with different aspects of computer science and talk about that. But for now, I don't see Dart going into the Python area of programming, but it does have a good chance in the web UI programming sphere. So that's going to be the first point that I wanted to make in this video. Now that we understood what does Dart do and what does Python do, it is time to define the scope for both of these languages. Well, in the beginning, Dart is actually going to be a heavily, heavily UI dependent language, meaning that it is going to be just a tool to create faster UI. And the Python, on the other hand, is a language for any, any field you take. So Python could be acting as a standard and web development architecture. It can create the UIs for you. It can even do data analysis, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Anything you touch, it can do it or it do, do it on its own style. So in that sense, if you want to define the concept or define the scope for the programming language, that is only going to be the popular language in terms of building faster UIs. And maybe it is difficult for it to come into the other sphere where it can do a say data analysis, it can do faster garbage collection. Maybe we are not yet really sure because a lot of it's it's still not the most popular language yet. So in that sense, I believe that it has got a long, long way to go yet. And that scope is going to be different for these two languages. So it's going to be taking so much time for the Dart to come and occupy the space that Python is actually currently occupying. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can still learn Dart even today. And I don't have a yet a playlist where I can show you or point you to. But currently, if you want to learn to program with Dart, you can still play around using the Dart pad, which is an online IDE. And the Dart pad is going to give you guys a lot of different ways to learn the programming language in just simple terms. So if you are going to look at learning to or even play around with Dart for some time, go to dartpad.dev, I guess, and just start looking at the Dartpad uh, IDE so you can still learn a lot of different concepts there for free. And that's going to give you guys the idea of where you want to go with and what you want to do. So if, if you guys ask me what should the programming language I should learn in 2020, I would still very much recommend Python if you're looking for different spheres. But if you're looking to learn a second language in 2020, why not consider Dart? So Dart is a good programming language. Again, I'm not saying it's the worst or it's not a bad programming language. Even though there is an index called as Tiob index, T-I-O-B-E index, which does rank the best programming language in, the, in a single year. So it, it did rank the Python as the number one programming language in three consecutive years. And in that, in that index, if you see Dart is not even in the top 20. So if that is going to be the process of, uh, that is going to be the path that the Dart has to take, it still has to take that path but for now, if you're looking to learn the programming language of Dart, you can very much well do so. But the conclusion for this video, right, we're going to compare the Dart versus the Python programming language. 
Dadas still not got any chance to compare with the Python programming language. Python is in every known sphere known to computer science and I'm very very happy to tell I'm also very proud to know that like Python is a very good programming language and it did start in the year 1995 and discovered long way long way to actually go to reach that position Dart still has that huge curve to climb and pre preferably if Dart is going to be touching into all these peers it's going to be a successful programming language as well all right if this video has changed your mind to learn dart as a second programming language why not subscribe to this channel because i'm going to be coming out with the dart series of videos and if you guys hit 100 likes for this video i'm going to be coming out with that series i mean no i'm just kidding even if you don't hit 100 likes i'm still going to be coming out this dart series because it's a most useful programming language and it's also the most popular programming language in 2019 so why not make a playlist on that i'm going to be giving you guys the ramp up time of 30 days 30 days of uh, Dart program programming is going to be coming out in this in this channel. So just smash the subscribe button. Stay tuned for when I release these videos because we are going to be ramping you guys in just 30 days to the programming language of Dart so that you can go pick that up and learn the Flutter toolkit from there. And that's just a natural progression for you guys to go if you are going to go towards the UI development uh, sphere. So that's going to be the idea for this channel. So make sure that you do subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it with your friends so that I get a lot of likes, I get a lot of subscription and I can make videos on Flutter, Dart, programming languages, a lot more yet to come. So make sure you do that. Let me meet you in the next video. Until then, it's part of the episode. Have a super awesome day.